What questions do you have? Yeah. Um, my work, I've done consulting for years. I like, stumbled into it by selling a, a POS system to help you sell I had this aha moment of what actually works. So now the story I can tell really isn't, I don't own a retail store. So, how, like, for people like me that I'm not a retail store owner, but my aha moment came from my services to them, where do you transition that? Because I can't tell my own story. Um, there are certainly industries, like um, I've had a few people who, who are in the financial area. They're like, I can't tell a story. I, Stephen, I can't make claims. I can't. Right, if you're in a scenario like that, totally fine if it's not your story. Right? You can still tell the story of other people. In fact, that's what testimonials are. It's still breaking false beliefs, still rebuilding their beliefs. You're just telling the story of somebody else that you've worked with. So that's totally fine. What are the questions? Let me get you the mic here. Hi, I'm Caroline. I help um, a lot of um, people that don't have authority, usually offline business, um, service providers, lawyers, doctors, or coaches, consultants. That are, you know, they want to build an online program. Um, they don't have any authority. So when I help them with their messaging, the big issue is, do I have to wait to a webinar to tell that sales message? Because a lot of the times they're struggling to get people to their webinar. So is the message only contained in a webinar script, or should it be sprinkled out throughout their journey when they're in the launch process. Yeah, uh, I, what would you think? Well, my issue is I feel that messaging should be everywhere. It shouldn't just be uh, at the end. So I help them do that and sprinkle it everywhere from any point of contact they're going to have. And then they're like, well, how? Like, what container does that message go in? Is it a Facebook post? Is it this, that, or the other? So I just want to hear your take on it because you yeah. are the expert. <laughs> <laughs> so what's interesting is like I use this script uh, all over the place. Uh, when I launched Sales Funnel Radio, I did not use the script, and I should have. Um, when I launched Secret MLMAX Radio, how many of you guys have listened to the first five episodes in a row? It is literally a webinar trinkled out. Five you know, webinars typically four stories and a pitch. Episode one was my origin story. Episode two is the story hitting the, the vehicle beliefs. Episode the next one was the internal. Next one was the external, and then I hit a uh, an offer, and it was free. But before I launched that course. Secret MLM Hacks, which was $1,000. Before I launched it, because I had done the Secret MLM Hacks, I call it the content webinar. Because I had done that, there was 2,000 people on my list and 400 on the waiting list for that product before it was even built, right? And that's, that's the purpose. That, that's, uh, so anyways, I use it all over the place. One more, I got one more question. And one. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thanks for putting this on. Um... So I've got um, my target, target audience is 11-year-olds. Mm. I'm selling to their parents. I've got to grab their attention, the 11-year-olds. And so am I, do I choose two customers and just sell to both or communicate to both of them? Um, I still sell to the parents, but tell a lot of stories of happy parent-kid relationships in cool. the ads. Yeah. All right, sweet. Yeah. Sweet. All righty. One more here. <laughs> okay, and uh, in your actual podcast, because I've gone through all of your all those podcasts at Ben's suggestion, um, and listened for you addressing the false beliefs. Do you address the false beliefs in each of those episodes? I do. Do you? Yeah, in those first those first five when I launched that show. I wish I launched Sales Funnel Radio that way. Pursuit of Profit will definitely be. Launch that way, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So I definitely do, though. I um, they don't always. I mean, they don't know that. They have no idea that's what I'm doing. But I'll make a whole. Since an episode for me is an Epiphany Bridge script. If you listen to what I'm doing, I literally just took that Epiphany Bridge script, and I would, because I didn't know what to say, so I would just turn those eight questions sideways. I just fill them all out, and then just delete the questions, and I was left with an episode. That's why I can tell that I'm reading those first few episodes, because I am. <laughs> I was going through, and I was reading the Epiphany Bridge script answers right there, right off of it. Yeah? yeah. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Makes content creation really, really easy. Um, and I uh, wish we could dive a little more into that. But, um,